we're probably gonna fish like one, two, three of these small bodies of water, all under a thousand acres, all very similar to a lot of other places you might fish. Well, well, well. Welcome back to another video, ladies and gentlemen. It's a beautiful August day today. Not too hot, nice and overcast. And I've been home for probably about five or six days now. Been fishing a little bit here and there. Filmed one thing where we were casting some big walleyes that uh, were suspended over basin. And you know, one question we get, all the time on this channel is Tom you know I fish a lot of small lakes around northern Wisconsin Minnesota Michigan you know Illinois whatever it might be and how do you fish a lot of those little lakes and obviously it's no secret that a lot of my time is spent on big lakes uh, recently Sakakawea Lake of the Woods Fort Peck all giant bodies of water right and although this channel was kind of born and bred on a lot of these smaller lakes. Sometimes with travel, I just don't get to fish them as much. Imagine if you were going to Montana to fish, right? Do you, can you name a walleye lake if you're from the Midwest that doesn't rhyme with Fort Peck? <laughs> I can't. So a lot of times when I go to these places, I just fish kind of like the place I know that has fish, right? But so today we're going to mix it up. Today we're doing something totally different. We're probably going to fish like one, two, three of these small bodies of water, all under a thousand acres, all very similar to a lot of other places you might fish, right? A lot of these little cabin country type lakes. Now, these lakes obviously don't have a million walleyes in them. A lot of these systems have low densities of walleyes, some of those eater size fish, maybe a couple fish, 22, you know, maybe a couple of those big freak trophy fish, 25 plusers in some of this little water. But if we could piece together a different day and kind of take you guys through the process on some small water, I'll feel like I've done my job for today. So um, we're gonna pop the big motor back on. Now, one thing you'll notice is that a lot of these small lakes, they don't have big complex reef systems, right? They don't have these massive interlock structures in deep waters that maybe your bigger systems have or fish kind of relate to for a lot of the season. A lot of these small lakes, they're compromised of a weed edge bite or weed bite because it's what go, it's a piece of structure that goes around the whole entire lake, right? So we're gonna target in this lake weeds and maybe in all three lakes we end up targeting weeds. I don't know. We're just kind of making this up as we go, right? None of this is like, we got some fish pinned down here, here, and here on three different lakes. So um, it's all kind of just go with the flow here, but we're kind of in one of these big weedy looking areas. And when you start out looking for fish in these areas, side imaging is generally your best friend. So it looks like we got some weeds here in 12, 11 feet. So we might kind of start driving through this and just looking at the side imaging and we'll bring you guys some information on what we're seeing when we see it, I guess. All right, you guys, so we're kind of starting to see what we want to see here. Now, I'll take a screenshot for you guys. Nothing impressive, right? Few marks. But what I can do is kind of scroll over to that, hit waypoint right here, and now that's obviously gonna pop up on my other screen where my fish are, as well as my front graph, if I want to, in fact, fish up there. So now this doesn't look really impressive, but one thing that happens when you get in weeds, especially if you are gonna run like a forward-facing sonar, is a lot of times you'll start seeing more fish than you saw through there on side imaging especially in this kind of weed, how it's kind of like, see if I can get to a decent screen here. If you see in weeds that look like this, where it's just real meshy, it's not like pockety that dips right out to sand a lot of times. Most time what you're looking at, it would be screenshots that, you know, look something like this, where you can see the bottom's like pretty soft and that weed is real meshy in there. So because of that, I might not be seeing some of those fish if they're like single stacked or, or whatever, if it's just one fish here, one fish there, I might not see those fish as good. So if you were to just do this with side imaging, you'd just get up parallel to those fish where that waypoint is, 
try to get a bead on them and then start making pinpointed casts. If you enjoy doing it more off a of forward facing sonar, then you obviously can go up to the bow and fish that way. It's kind of up to how you like to do it. But don't think like, because you don't have a forward facing, you're not, you can't catch them, right? We caught them for years just casting out with side edging. To me, I just enjoy the fun of fishing off the forward facing. So we're going to kind of zig it back into this little area here and see if we can't make some pitches at these fish because there's definitely a few fish in here now is there enough to catch 10 15 20 probably not right but if we can pull like three fish out of each of these little lakes in a relatively short amount of time and take you guys along for the ride that's kind of the goal now on a lot of these little lakes in my experience you don't need like anything super fancy to fish with you know one kind of jig with a maybe a snap jig plastic or some kind of finesse plastic on it can be a good option we're just going to get a little quarter ounce jig out then we'll get a drop shot out. How does that sound for an idea? Drop shot's normally a good option for fishing, a lot of fish in the summertime, but the other option would be like a search bait, which is obviously highly coveted bait. Oh, we're getting phone calls. Right there. <laughs> Man, you could see him fighting there. He followed it for quite a ways on that cast. Well, I kind of rifled through a couple things, caught a little pike. Now I'm sure we got the right kind of fish on. Oh, yeah, nice walleye. You know, this is what you can come to expect in a lot of these real small little natural lakes, you know. 15, 20 inch fish snugged up on a weed edge. Could probably boat flip them, but you know, we'll scoop them up here. That search bait is just so deadly on this style of fishing where you're just, I mean, it's obviously so versatile, but you can comb down a lot of different areas to kind of catch fish on this different bait. It's honestly one of those things I keep feeling like each video I do, like, man, I got to take this off and, you know, use something else. But then I end up like <laughs> putting it back on right away <laughs> in order to get a quick fish. But there we go. Nice walleye right there. You know, 18 inches, I would say. Perfect little golden perky guys though, huh? We'll take them like that. And uh, like I said, I got kind of a few different presentations going here. The search bait's so nice because I can really watch what those fish do when they get around the bait. You know, there's some baits you're kind of limited to how you can work the bait based on what the bait is. Drop shot. You're not really gonna like start moving that bait really fast a lot of times to try to trigger a fish. But, you know, the search bait, if you all of a sudden you have one start chasing and you're like, ah, oh, he's not that interested, you can go fast, you can go slow, you can twitch it on the way in, you can burn it quick. All of those things I've had success doing, a lot of it's just kind of how you're reading that fish and watching them move. But let's say you come in here with the side imaging, see a bunch of fish up in here. Search bait's also a great tool to, you could just bomb it out there and cover some water, right? Kind of count that bait down or just let it touch bottom and start reeling. It actually comes through the weeds really nice too. Ooh, see all those way out there? Oh. Yeah, right there. <laughs> We got a walleye. Feels like it could be a walleye. It could also be a bass, though. So that was just on a quarter ounce jig and a worm, which we haven't really fished that way a whole lot on this channel. It's a lot of times it's like so archaic. It's like you guys know it, but there's a lot of presentations where, like, as you use more forward facing, you kind of start to fish the presentation a little bit differently. And one thing you can do with just a half crawler and a jig is just almost holy cow did we get him good right in the corner we'll get you back there buddy but almost just like twitch it up above that fish he's a nice little 16 there you know 
And that is like the most archaic basic form of fishing there's ever been. Jig, night crawler, right? Summertime walleyes everywhere will bite that. But instead of like jigging it like normal, a lot of times what you can do is either like drop it right on top of a fish and they really like it when it's falling. Or you can almost just like hop it around up off bottom and you'll, you'll, you guys will be able to see this pretty good here. Like let's say there's a couple fish way out there. See if there's a, well, you guys will be able to see it here. So I'll just make a cast about 40, 50 out. And obviously you could see that jig kind of going down right there. Then what I'll do is I'll just kind of get it up above the weeds and I'll just kind of hop it back to me like this real slow. And a lot of times what you'll see is like, if there's fish in there, you'll see them like start coming out of the weeds to get it, right? And you could see that jig just kind of hopping and floating back over the weed edge like that. And you basically just do that same thing you know, right on top of a fish. And a lot of times that's how you can get bit, right? And you just track that jig kind of all the way back to the boat like that, just above the weeds and it's super effective. Holy cow. You guys see that? <laughs> I mean, that drop shot was like, or what is this even on here? Oh, that was the jig and crawler. <laughs> It was literally like a foot under the surface. Oh, you're never safe out here. Never safe in these little lakes when you get in a weed bed. There's going to be bass. There's going to be pike. There's going to be walleye. There's going to be crappies. A little bit of everything is going to be in there. Sometimes all you got to do is put your jig just like a foot down. The unintended bass catch right there. One more walleye and we're on to the next lake. Right there, <laughs> right off the side of the boat, man. It is a nice walleye too. Oh, we didn't have old Mega Live going though. It's all right, you guys have to trust me. Decent walleye here. It's on the old jig worm again. We'll flip you on in there, buddy. He's probably the goodest, the most goodest one I got so far. But fun, man. It is one of my favorite parts about my job, honestly, is just constantly mixing it up, right? You get to go to a little lake over here, and you get to go to a big lake over here. You get to go to a river system. You get to do this. And just kind of experiencing catching walleyes all over the place. That's a perfect little eater right there. If you were going to come out to one of these small lakes, awesome, man. Well, I think we're probably going to go to another lake, right? We got this one pretty dialed in on this weed edge. Now we've only fished one weed edge, but I'm sure you could go all around the lake looking at weeds and every few weed spots, you know, you might see a little pot of fish here and there. Alrighty, we rolling, we're rolling. Lake number two of the day. Very different kind of lake, seemingly by what the map says than lake number one. Lake number one was kind of just a weed edge. Oh, it's kind of a few little islands, a little point here and there, weed edge. This one's your classic bowl lake, right? Just a round bowl and the basin, you know, all kind of 20, 30 feet. You could probably think of 10 lakes that sound just like this, right? Looks like water clarity, maybe about trolling motor depth. And we're just gonna jump right into some of these, I mean, basically these bowl lakes, what, you got a point, maybe a hump here, but not like structure everywhere, right? So if fish are gonna be on a piece of structure, the other place they'd be would just be roaming the basin, but. If they are gonna be on structure, it makes it pretty easy to like say, all right, well, there's only two points and a hump on this lake, right? So those are obviously the spots we're gonna start looking at and we'll see what happens from there. And when we get on some fish, we'll, we'll try to show kind of a good picture of where they are, how they're set up, things of that nature. But cause we're so time crunched today, number one, I don't know if we're gonna get to lake number three, but we're just gonna go straight at them here real fast with the live on a few of these spots. And that, or cruising through it with a side imaging right away, or doing it with live and just going very fast. Those are kind of your 
couple of ways you can break down a lot of this real small structure just kind of really fast and we're just going to get out search bait drop shot and just go at it here I don't know if we're recording for that, but we do in fact have a walleye. <laughs> Never fished for walleyes in this lake before. So this is all kind of new here, kind of on this first little point we're looking at here. And you know, lakes like this, you can fish through all these points in about an hour because <laughs> there's obviously, there's not a whole lot of these points. And this little, oh, make sure that stays in the boat. But this little point we're on here, um, you can see right in front of me on the live, it's all that mesh on the bottom there. And I'll kind of point it out here in a second, but that is what a lot of little globbed up walleyes will look like right here. And you could probably be able to see it here if I put the bait right on top of them. You'll probably be able to see there's a drop shot going down. It might be a little short of them, but see that one just kind of popped up now he's kind of moving down and i'm sure one of them will eat it here because these fish are probably not super intelligent obviously that's a lot of times what those <laughs> those small wallies will do they'll just kind of jam all up they almost look like bluegills or something together Oh, it's not going to be 12 inches. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Oh, it's a nice walleye. <laughs> All right. Oh, we're putting it together. Nice walleye, man. I mean, there's no complaints about that. You guys might be watching this saying, Tom, they're not 25 inches long. That is 100% true. But these are the fish that most people, you know, are fish for every day. It's not, uh, not everybody's going to all these crazy places all the time. So a lot of times these kind of videos, I feel like are even more practical than a lot of the other videos we shoot. Small lake pressured walleyes. <laughs> it's kind of fun, man. I mean, you get to see a lot of different water and it's just an enjoyable way to fish, right? I mean, you could take a lot of these areas like where I live, you could be on, you know, one of, 10 different lakes within 15 minutes of, of each other so it kind of makes a fun day a lot of times just going lake to lake to lake to lake and i am certainly enjoying this so far today except we got a drop shot weight just all tangled up in my net right now oh there's one got him fish on <laughs> oh we're having some fun look at all those fish out there right there man putting it together on the small lakes dude there we go well i guess technically a limit of walleyes would be probably three i think three is the wisconsin statewide limit but in a short amount of time just by kind of running through real fast with the live now you could 100 percent could find these fish with side imaging as well and we'll show that in a second. Kind of once we get done doing our damage here, we'll just kind of swip o switch over to that and I'll kind of show you guys what we're looking at. But the main thing is in these small lakes, you know, it can only really be so complicated, right? Because there's only so many places the fish can go. The thing you always struggle with in a lot of these smaller lakes is just that there's not a lot of fish in them, right? You're fishing very low numbers fisheries because they obviously don't have some massive robust forage base that, you know, can kind of deal with a lot of fish in the system and you'll see a lot of stuff on forward facing that looks just like that where it's a lot of the similar sized fish all bundled together now we're sitting at 14 feet like you guys could probably see on the graph and we're just on the outside of where i'd assume the weeds kind of starting here i just couldn't quite get up there <laughs> this is gonna be a real small one up there and into that weed edge yet because I just hit this pot of fish kind of before I got there. 
cute little guy right there. Here we're getting some dinkers. But it can be done. The small lake challenge. That's a real small walleye right there though. So we're going to cruise down this point, which I came into right away. And the first thing you're going to see right off the bat here is kind of how these fish are set up. First of all, very sandy, very clean bottom here, right? So let's go ahead and take a screenshot. Now, a lot of times your pods of smaller walleyes, they're going to look something like this right here. Now, these fish are just on a sand point, obviously kind of like roaming around. And that screenshot might not look like anything wild and out of control. Like, holy cow, look at all the fish here. Those are a lot of the pods of fish in which you're hunting on a lot of these systems like this. Now, I would assume, because those fish are sitting on a plain sand edge on just a little point that runs into shore, that at some point in the season, or maybe even right now, as you sneak up in here to where it gets weedy, my guess is you'd see some more fish as well. Now, obviously we don't have to go very long distance a lot of time until it gets weedy, but if, we'll kind of take another little screenshot here, just this other little roaming pot of walleyes off the edge. That is what you're looking for, and actually here's a better one. That dark spot off the right side that is where it starts to break off of this point and just kind of go out into the 20 foot basin you know so in a lot of these lakes that don't have a lot of depth essentially what you're looking at is just any piece of structure that comes out that almost meets the basin right or it could be a weed edge thing because obviously this is all just sand up here so it's quite possible that when you eventually get into a weed edge that there could be more fish and we can just go look at it real quick we kind of got where those fish that we're targeting are kind of dialed in here. Just kind of wanted to give you guys the overall view. This shouldn't take too long. Nope. <laughs> there we go, man. Dialing them in on the little lakes today. I feel like a kid again, you know? There's no like highly technical side of running around, covering a million miles of water, which has been what my last month is. And it's fun just to get back to the root of walleye fishing for me. You know, a lot of these smaller lakes like this. And it's a lot of fun, like I said nothing big in this video now i would assume normally what you see on like post frontal east wind cooler days i mean it's like mid 60s for a high today and east wind is you see a lot of those big fish not as bitey at least that's one thing i've noticed just kind of like over the years so maybe you come back to some of these lakes on the right day and do some different stuff to catch some bigger fish but we're getting phone calls probably because i'm supposed to go back home and work with mitch on a bunch of app stuff right now and lo and behold it's mitchell calling me Mitchell. I'm out there dicking around. <laughs> Am I still out there dicking around? You're live on YouTube. I've just caught the last fish. Do you want to say any words? Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Hey, YouTube. <laughs> How does that sound? Why have you not been on <laughs> Why have you not been on a video recently? I was just going to say, did you tell YouTube I've been just hard at work behind the scenes? I told him you've so been on like three follow. vacations and you're just kicked back, feet in the sand somewhere. You probably did. Also <laughs> tell YouTube I'm going to be back in the boat pretty shortly for a while pretty shortly which is exciting news but uh yeah i'm gonna get off of here because i've already caught a bunch of walleyes and uh i'll be home in t minus 30 minutes 10-4 all right see ya All right, guys, we are back in the garage. That is going to do it for today's video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed watching this one. What's going on, guys? Look who <laughs> we yeah. scrounged okay. up out of this chicken farming operation. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, hopefully, you guys enjoyed watching this one. Obviously, a little different kind of video today. Just kind of targeting some of those tiny waters that have walleye. Spend so much time going big lake to big lake to big lake all the time. I feel like we don't give a lot of the real small little sub a thousand acre lakes enough credit. Obviously they have fish in them, you kind of fish a little bit different. And uh, there's a bunch of exciting stuff, Mitchell, coming on the app side of there things. Is, yeah. 
which yes. we've spent a ton of time over the course of the last... Well, Mitch has spent Pretty a lot of time. Yeah, I've basically so. just been like listening and listening to him rant and everything like that. But yeah. <laughs> it's coming. So thank you all you guys for following along. Thank you guys for watching this video. We also have some new stuff on Contour as well. Check out maybe this design right here or this one as well. Some cool stuff there. Appreciate all the support. You guys letting me do what I do every day it means a lot to me. And hopefully you guys enjoy the content. So appreciate you guys watching this one. If you're not yet, please subscribe. Stay tuned for more content. We'll see you next time.